Hello, Tarot Geeks! Joe here. I'm doing another tarot tag already. Two-Spirit and Ragged Poet. Okay. Rider Waite Smith Tarot Tag. Hashtag all about the RWS. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite RWS clone and why? Okay, so I, there's a lot of uh, talk about what is a clone and mindful tarot. Genius. She's a genius. Amazing. Um, she reminds me of my conservatory teachers in art school, but she was just going, she was talking about clones and it reminded me of like mimetics and culture and how copying is the engine of culture and cultural proliferation and it just like got me going through these racing thoughts. Um, I think my favorite reconstruction would be the, probably the decks by Chiro Marchetti, because he's like one of my favorite tarot artists. My favorite clone is the Centennial Edition, um, because in my own reality tunnel, I don't know if this is true or not, but I think it might be the closest to the original, um, or it could just be a, a marketing strategy saying that, but I don't know. Um, yeah, I just like the sharp lines and it's slightly muted and uh, it's not so loud. But I also like the very loud, vibrant neon colors of the good old uh, bluebacks. I do like the, the relentless neon yellow. <laughs> I like, I don't know, I, I, like, I like both. And I actually edged the sides black because I'm a weirdo, but I really think it looks pretty cool. See, when you fan it out, it gets like a, almost like a little 3D effect when you have like the white border, but then the black actual border. It's, uh, I think it's kind of cool. What's your life path card and how do you relate to it? Um, the Hierophant. And I actually really love this card. Whereas I know some people see it as like patriarchal and dogmatic. And I used to see it as, as, as this way as well, but... Now, I really see this card as connecting with your higher self, but specifically the means or the upaya in Buddhism uh, to connect with your higher self, um, the way to do the thing. Uh, and it's it's important to me. I like ritual. I like functionality. I like um, strategy. I like um, links. Okay, so like the, the, the card's letter is... The card's letter is Vav which means nail. So there's a whole Christian mysticism attached to this um, with the crucifixion. And if you think nail put, brings things together, and also the, the Hebrew letter Vav is used in the language to, to say end, like A-N-D, end. Um, so it's a conjoiner, it brings together, it links, it's a bridge. And I, I think about things like the breath, uh, the breath, focusing on the breath as a means of connecting to the present moment and the concrete reality. Um, that's just one example. But um, yeah, so I do see this as a connection to your higher self and the means in which you can, you sh you can get there, um, which is very important to me as a dancer, dance teacher, and choreographer, because I'm, I feel like I'm always researching these psychosomatic methods to induce a hypersensitivity in my students and my dancers and my company is I'm always looking for ways to get into that like cerebral high energy um, excitement but um, sensitivity as well um, and I mean the tarot deck is a hierophant is it not is it not a system through which we connect to these energies and ideas is it not a blueprint or a map of the territory which is life, you know? Because, and I think we can all agree that the map is not the territory, but it's very helpful having a map, right? <laughs> and my, your favorite major and favorite minor. Okay, my favorite major. My favorite major is The Hanged Man uh, for a million and one reasons. Um, I love the unconventionality aspect of the card. Okay. <laughs> So my old favorite was the Eight of Pentacles, um, and I'm a Capricorn, so I really relate to this like sense of work. And uh, I don't, I don't even really believe in 
in a way, I don't even believe in creativity outside of what you do with your creativity. That to me is real creativity, like how you work and refine your craft because everyone's got a good idea. It's like how much time and effort and blood and sweat you're gonna, are you willing to put in to manifest that idea? Uh, but my new favorite is the 10 of pentacles because in the system that I'm very much attached to right now with tarot, um, this is the last card of the whole deck, right? Because earth is the last element and 10 is the last. Um, so it is the point of reintegration back into spirit. It's like everything is completed. I mean, you can see the tree of life right on the card. Um, but also, I'm going to tell you the secret that's not really a secret, and it might not be a thing, but I'm so sure it's a thing. See this old man? He's definitely the hermit. And the reason why is because this is, astrologically, it's Mercury and Virgo. Virgo is attributed to the Hermit, and Mercury is attributed to the Yod, which is the letter attributed to the Hermit. And there's this whole doctrine about the Word and the Logos and the will of the universe and how it crystallizes into, into its maximum before reintegrating back into the Source, and uh, like the Kalpas, and it connects to all religions. And it's just like, when I first uh, connected this, I was like, do you prefer, okay, question four, do you prefer the RWS system over others? If so, why? If not, why not? I used to. Um, so I, reading tarot since I was like 12, I've always been Rider Waite guy all the time. But again, two or a year and a half ago, I started, I jumped into Thothland and then everything changed. Um, but kind of, in a way, everything changed because the th Thoth deck to me just really outshines the Rider weight in certain ways that have kept me in Thoth land. Um, and the system is just, to me, in my opinion, is more cohesive and more intricate, but richer. You know, like every card is related to every other card in some way. And there's so many patterns to work with. Whereas the Rider weight is more just a chronology of ideas, even though it, there is so much in here. And I don't think the Rider weight is a beginner deck. I think you can start with it, and it's good to be it for beginners, but it's not a beginner beginner deck in the sense of its simplicity, because it's not simple. There's a lot in here. Uh, but the Thoth deck, the Thoth deck is just, I find, more saturated and more potent and more nuanced and technical with the patterns and archetypes and ideas and it's uh i would say it has more of a propensity to dig into cosmic and universal ideas in nature so i feel like for example the major arcana are more like ideas that exist in nature already without humans needing to be there whereas in the rider weight deck the 22 major arcana I find to be more of a path to initiation for humans. Um, yeah, so I use them both. Um, but even now, when I'm using the Rider Waite deck, a lot of my work with it now actually comes from studying the Thoth deck and the Kabbalah, um, <clears throat> because it's just such a rich system. I want to start saying things like, once you go Thoth, you'll never go back. <laughs> but... I don't know. I, I think they're both really great. <clears throat> I've never Marseilled. One day, maybe. One day I'm going to Marseille, but I haven't yet. What card is stalking you currently? That would be art or t cards you look for in any style deck. The make or break. Uh, Eight of Pentacles. I, cards that are very distinct, like the Eight of Pentacles is a very distinct idea. The High Priestess. Um, it's just like a power card. Like, you, you gotta have a good high priestess, you know? <laughs> if you don't have a good high priestess, you might as well not, not make the deck, <laughs> you know? You gotta have the good magician, gotta have a good high priestess. You gotta have a good every card, you know? You really do. Every card is just so in integral. Your first and last RWS. Uh, my last Rider Waite Smith deck that I got was this um, regular plaid back um, because I needed a new one. And I missed these blaring neon colors that just are so unapologetically bright. I actually like that. Uh, my oldest one was at, the first deck I ever got was this, not this specific deck, but this, a copy of this. Um, 
by the book or intuitive reader? You know, I'm really by the book, but I definitely use intuition. I mean, I don't know how you read for someone without using intuition. I'd actually be interested. Does anyone read for other people only by the book? That would be really cool and interesting. Um, I would say I'm a little bit more by the book than I am intuitive, but I'm getting more intuitive now than I used to be um, because I'm just very much about the system. But no, I I think I, I'm both. Yeah, I think I'm both. Because all my like good moments in readings come from intuition. Um, and whenever I get into the by the book stuff, it's more, I, it's more of like a lecture or like a, a rant, but sometimes the by the book stuff and ranting leads into the intuition. So I do like taking the cosmic principles of tarot and then bringing it down to earth to the questioner. Um, because a lot of times that rant will lead into, um, like really good intuitive hits. How do you feel about the proliferation of RWS style decks, good or bad? Are there too many? No, I think it's great. I think the Rider Waite Smith is such a good system um, because it's so palpable and it's so relatable and it's user friendly in my opinion, even though it can be very deep at the same time. So in that sense, I feel like it wears many hats and because it wears so many hats, we have different types of people getting different types of hats because everyone wants their own type of hat. But I think the Rider Waite Smith has a lot um, to offer. And I mean, I, I feel, and this is just me, and I, I'd like to hear someone uh, contradict this idea, but I feel, not that it matters, but I feel like Arthur Edward Waite designed the deck for the masses to use it but did not design it to be an esoteric or super spiritual tool because he kind of hid a lot of his knowledge from it. And I feel like his deck, his Rider Waite deck is an exoteric tarot, but because we're smart, um, we've kind of worked around that and dug into all these occult areas and kind of brought that out into the deck anyway. So it's always interesting. I mean, I agree that tarot is a living system and that it's always going to change. You know, I'm always interested in what ideas and doctrines were curated by the progenitor of the tradition versus what we kind of superimpose onto it. Not that it matters. It's just a point of interest to me because I like to be mindful of what am I putting into the system and what am I taking from the system, okay? So that I know kind of the pathways of the cultural exchange. I guess that's more of an academic uh, inquiry, but whatever. Now draw a card from your favorite deck and ask, what do I need to learn right now? Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Someone got from my, my big T. The big T. The big T. What does the universe want to tell me now? What does the universe want to tell me now? Probably that I should go to bed. Oh, Ten of Discs. Whoa, I was just obsessing over this a few minutes ago, wasn't I? Yeah, the Ten of Discs. Ah, it's probably, I think it's my favorite minor arcana right now. Definitely. Yeah, there's just so much in it. You're like, ah, okay, Ten of Discs, I'm good. Everything's in its rightful place. My grandmother would always say, my grandmother was a Christian scientist. She would always say, everything is in its rightful place. Cool. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I hope to make more tags and uh, geek out further with you guys about tarot and mysticism and all this good stuff. So um, please leave a comment. Um, like it if you like it uh, or dislike it if you don't like it. Uh, tell me what you don't like about it. That would be cool. Um, check out my video on the Thoth deck where I just rant about the Thoth deck because I love the Thoth deck and I'm just a nerd. Cool. Great geeking out with you guys.